The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I wanna make self-growth normal. If you wanna make self-growth normal, cause I don't wanna do it alone, and who doesn't wanna make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button. This book is where social media and business and creating a wow experience for your customers and clients for me, where that all met. I used to watch a lot of his content. I think at some point his content lost its potency, where it went from practical and mindset-based to just so mindset-based that it kind of like saturated itself with like fluff. But it's lost its potency for me. When I think of Gary Vee and potency together, the closest thing I've held on to for all these years was this book. This book is actually what introduced me to him. It's not like basic, it's before he had all these fans. And this is a guy who I like to call the Nostradamus of social media. He has this very, 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 very unique, just uncanny ability to predict tr the movement of trends in digital media, marketing, and effective methods of brand growth. This guy predicted that Mark Zuckerberg was going to buy Instagram. No one believed him, and when he found out he was right, he stayed up an entire night on Twitter calling out people who called him an idiot. He predicted the exponential rise of Amazon, calling Jeff Bezos the next Steve Jobs in terms of Amazon's relentless care for the customer experience. This guy was talking about TikTok years before it was even named TikTok. Also Anchor, which the last time I checked is like basically YouTube for podcasts. I had an anger at some point. Um, I had a podcast, it was a weekly podcast called Learnings. So Gary Vaynerchuk, social media fortune teller. And it's not just these predictions, but his practical advice is just, it's golden. In this review, I'm gonna talk about what's, you know, what's so great about this book. What I would change, if anything. Also recently, I reviewed a book called Purple Cow by, uh, by marketing expert Seth Godin, who I'm hoping to talk about some similarities between those books or why those two, why these two complement each other so well. Gary Vaynerchuk is an unconventional people person of business. And what do I mean by that? Well, he's either unconventional Sugar, he's either unconventional out of being so conventional that seemingly no one else looks at things the way he does, or we have reached a, a point in business today where there is no option but to do so. Technology may be evolving on our part, but humans will always be humans. And there is no way in sight to part from this inherent desire that we have to connect with each other. That and smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you haven't done so already. In the audiobook, he has this tendency to veer off script occasionally. This is something that, in a lot of ways, I don't really like about him. Gary V dislikes reading. He hates books, which is weird because he's an author. I think that's absurd in a bad way. Most of the very, very, very successful people he looks up to, they love reading. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, I think Mark Cuban and Tony Robbins are up there. Jeff Bezos for sure. Here's one section. It's an example of when people say that Gary Vee is very sincere, just a genuine guy, is because he says stuff like this. I mean, later on it involved lots and lots of cursing, but I think at some point in this book he said that like, I'll save all the cursing for like, for my, for my keynotes. The next time you hear someone say on Twitter, the next time I get 500 followers on Twitter, I'm gonna donate $500 to Haiti. Please send them my way so I can punch them in the face and call them out because that's disgusting to really leverage tragedy to gain followers. We all know what you're doing. Consumers BS radars are better than you think. This book, I'll put it this way. It is the book that got me to start taking social networking seriously. It also taught me a lot about just business ethics and going above and beyond, putting others' needs in front of your own and trusting that with the right intention, the more you put in, you're eventually just gonna start getting back. Napoleon Hill calls this in so many of his books, the law of increasing returns. This isn't the newest technology then in terms of like, success or whatever. But he said in interviews, Gary Vaynerchuk, by the way, that this is not like karma, it's not, it's common sense to a degree. <laughs> like, it's not just, not just some spiritual thing. <laughs> the main reason I don't do anything beyond YouTube right now is that I just do not have the time. I'm sorry, like I will pour my life into YouTube. YouTube is my hub platform. I don't mean to sound defensive or anything. I mean, people, not, no one's really called me out for this. So I guess I'm just calling myself out, but I think it's important to understand for anyone starting out, for me, and Gary Vaynerchuk, like when he was doing Line Library, he was very, very focused on YouTube. He did, he spent a lot of time on Twitter and he is all over the place now, but like he started on YouTube and that was his hub platform. 
I think it still is. And I think Twitter and Facebook, last time I checked those are kind of behind it, but still. For me, before it was YouTube, it was Instagram, and before Instagram it was Facebook, and Twitter, and SoundCloud, and other social media experts will say to have one platform that you focus on the most, at least in the beginning. So my problem with the philosophy of give, give, give is something I don't like to think about because it as much as I like feel conflicted about saying this, it involves scarcity. A different book really, really dives into this that I'm gonna mention later on in the review. But it seems nowadays there's an abundance of everything. For me, the first one that comes to mind in terms of what there is not an abundance of is time. I work as a BDC at a dealership. I sell the appointments for now. Uh, salesmen sell the cars. I drove three hours to Maryland from Pennsylvania with a salesman to deliver a car to a customer. We left at like three or something. We got back at like 11. This is a vehicle that people have driven to the dealership to buy coming from Florida. Like it's, it's, it's a great vehicle. <laughs> Am I complaining? Absolutely not. I really hope it doesn't sound that way. I mean, this was a great experience. It was a very memorable day. But I think I'm trying to say that like we could have easily driven like 30 minutes to go to a customer who just as much wanted the vehicle <laughs> and saved hours of time. And it begs the question, like, what's the difference between doing that and doing the three hour ride other than the time? I don't know, Sam. What if that dude in Maryland is like the cousin of Governor Wolf and he has a whole network of people in Pennsylvania who love to, who love to buy cars? And this is one, just one example, but it seems like what bending over backwards for people is something that you just have to maybe consider the other side of. And looking at both sides for me was always the most important thing. Maybe that's just me. I think with this aspect of it, like he could have he could have stressed a little bit more that other side just to further address that he understands people who don't initially agree with him because he did say throughout the book how important he knows that money is. This customer was incredibly happy by the way. And I learned a lot about the salesman on the way back. <laughs> but again, people have driven to us to get this vehicle for from like Florida and like completely different areas of the country. It's a very special vehicle. I've mentioned this vehicle in multiple videos on my channel so far. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. It's called the Kia Telluride. What I'm wondering is though, like what could we do to make serving those customers, both the real one and the hypothetical one, at the same time for less? Less money, less time. For the sake of the dealer I work at, this is solely why I read business books. Like I'm just uh, just obsessed with stuff like this. The basic idea here is that things like this create word of mouth. Honesty, transparency, asking people for feedback, whether they buy from you or not, and losing sleep from those you don't ult ultimately gather it from. I like to ask referrals from people who buy somewhere else. <laughs> Seems kind of backwards, but you know, you miss all the shots you don't take, right? Maybe like one out of 10 people will give me will give me information, but that's worth it. And again, it's also kind of like a chance that you take and where a lot of this stuff comes from, being a corporate culture that is centered around customer satisfaction, but it also takes more than a year and a half for that, 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 uh, that, that, vein of marketing to become notably profitable but you're but if you're doing that stuff anyway and when paying for advertising is starting to work less and less for companies that are even already known then what's the point in advertising through anything but your own customer i love when he says in this chapter about micro trends i actually learned this from gary v i mean i can say whatever i dislike about him but i mean in reality there is a lot of substance if you look for it it is worth casting a line into micro trend ponds they are less crowded, less noisy, and less expensive than the bigger ones in which everyone else is fishing. In the thank you economy, these ponds will appear with greater and greater frequency. The likelihood is that they will dry up quickly too, but when used properly, microtrends can provide a fresh channel through which brands can tell their story to a new audience. In intent quality versus quantity, he emphasizes that quality and quantity are both important. They are both important and not to neglect either. I love this. <laughs> the thank you economy is also kind of like, it's an economy of so many different things, but like giving is clearly one of them. And it's hard for, for executives to wrap their heads around allegedly spoiling customers by giving out free amusement park uh, experiences, for example. But that's because a large percentage of them are salespeople at heart, not marketers. Giving things out for free, by the way, is like a, is like a marketing tactic that's become increasingly like just 
Om omnipresent, there, that's the word. One of my favorite four syllable words. And it can be extremely effective, you know, with the right intent. A little more on this can easily be found in the book Free by Chris Anderson. Marketing expert, I think editor for Wired Magazine. The next part is like a series of examples of like the thank you economy in action. He talked about the I'm on a horse, Old Spice commercials, and how Old Spice dropped the ball, dropped the ball while playing I don't know, Gary Vee calls it ping pong. Just having this extended conversation that's constantly extending with everyone who, who who's reaching out to them on Twitter. The next work uh, about the company Avaya, a technology company specializing in business communications, a burger joint in Milwaukee, AJ Bombers, the second largest operator of boutique hotels in the US from California. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Joie de Vere. Irina Voxman, a dentist also from California. I think most of these were from California. <laughs> and Hank Hyming, a, a lawyer who specializes in venture, venture capital, company debt, and equity funds. Overall, this book is like golden. To me, it was always golden. I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk said it, most of its contents will probably be irrelevant by 2015 because of how much everything will have changed by then. But I don't know if I entirely believe him. I mean, his thoughts on caring for employees and like customers are such a blast from the past per se that it's almost as if they're ahead of his time like he says however it will become normal to care for customers <laughs> like really genuinely care because marketers we ruin everything we take everything new and we beat it to death i don't know about you guys but i never look at my email for anything ever. I'm so annoyed by everything on there that it's like, why bother? Unless I'm expecting something important. It's the same reason I don't answer phone calls from numbers or names that I don't, I don't, I do not recognize. Unless of course that person leaves like more than one or two voicemails. Quotes. Just because you can't dribble well or get the rock in the hoop doesn't mean there's a design flaw in your basketball. There is little difference between online and offline behavior. It's all public. Behind every B2B transaction, there is a C, direction one. If you do not think social media is a big deal for business, success, this book is calling your name. If you do, but you don't know where to start, this book is calling your name. This book is also calling your name if you don't know how to treat customers in a way that makes you stand out from the crowd, direction two, especially on social media. If you like this book, you might like If You're Not First, You're Last by Grant Cardone. I have no idea what it is about that book that reminds me of Thank You Economy. I think it's the different parts about like customer service and just serving people and going above and beyond. But this book also really reminded me of Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Seth Godin and Gary Vaynerchuk go hand in hand. They're like clouds and sunshine. The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk. There's a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you wanna check those out too. Uh, if you guys buy any of the books or anything through the links in the description, then I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keeping these videos. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please, please, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.